Hey, welcome back to Geek Toolkit. And in this episode, I want to talk about arcade parts, mainly buttons, uh, encoders, which look like these, and joysticks. Now, this is a very generic video, but this is all about the lingo. If you have not built an arcade machine and you want to build one, or if you want to modify an arcade one up, or even if you want to do like your own joystick setup, uh, there's going to be a bit of terminology that you want to understand. And I also want to go over the parts so that you understand the difference between a button that looks like this and a button that looks like this. Because it can be a bit confusing. You might hear words like Sanwa or JLF or Samitsu or Octagon Gates, and I want to go over what all that stuff is. So let's talk about buttons first. So let's get these joysticks out. And let's talk about buttons. And the first thing I want to talk about is companies, because one of the things you'll hear about is hat buttons and Samitsu buttons. And the reality is, the Samitsu, Sanwa, these are companies. Samitsu and Sanwa are very popular in Japan. They make these rounded top buttons like this. HAP made most of the US arcade game parts. So they make buttons that are concave like this. This actually goes in. This is a HAP style button, but not made by HAP. This is actually an arcade one up button. Now, as I go through this, one of your questions might be, well, wait a sec, which one's better or which one do I use? You use the one that feels the way you want it to feel for the types of games that you want to play and for what you remember. So these HAP style buttons, there's the concave part here. There's also, this is a screw on button. This is good for a wooden control panel where it's got some depth to it or some thickness, a control panel like that thick. This is what's called a press in button. And you can see it's, you can't put this in a thick control panel because it, this right here has to snap in to the control panel. So this is for a thin metal control panel or if you're building a, a joystick that has like a thin piece of wood on it, say something like this here, let's see. If you're building that's your joystick top, then you could put this button, have the top stick out there and then it would snap under it. So that's the difference between the screw and the, the knot. The screw in ones, have a piece that goes like this and it just kind of spins underneath the panel. So you put this through the panel, you screw this on from underneath and that locks it in. The other thing about the HAP in American style is they have a button that goes down here, looks like this, or it's, I'm sorry, it's a switch. And here's a completed assembly that what that looks like. So when you hit the button, you'll hear a click. And what's going on there is the switch, this orange piece is getting pressed. Now there's three, three um, ends here. And if you read on the side here, one says NO and one says NC. The NO means normally open. The NC means normally closed. When you're wiring these, normally an arcade button is going to be open. And when you press it, it closes the circuit. So you would wire this as NO, normally open. If for some reason you wanted to wire up a, a switch the opposite way, you would put a wire normally closed and on the other pin. The other pin is your ground pin. And you'll notice that with all the buttons that we talked about, there's going to be ground and, norm, and a uh, normally, i got to think about this, normally open pin. If you look at the Commodore 64 control joystick video I did, it talks about how buttons and switches work. And that is applicable. It doesn't matter if it's a Commodore 64 joystick or an arcade joystick. It's the same concept. These basically close a circuit and send a signal. So a hat button with a switch. You put two wires into what's called an encoder. We'll talk about that in a second. But what about this button? This button is a press-in style button. This is for the arcade one-up panels. And when you press it, it's got a bit of a play here. Again, I, can't, I can only explain it but it's not as responsive. And that may be why some people are not huge fans of these versus a higher quality button. The other thing about the switch, real quick, I'm gonna go back to, you can put different switches in these. So just like on keyboards have different switches like Cherry or MX, if you hear about Cherry switches, that's this part being different to change the stiffness here. Again, here's a, a old style switch and a, a newer style. The old style, very, very lightweight to activate, very stiff on this newer one. Which one's better? Depends on your feel. Do you want a really stiff, satisfying feel, or do you want a very lightweight, quick feel? Might depend on the type of game you're playing or just your personal preference. 
This is a special button. This is a the rounded top, the convex top here is a Japanese style. And so you'll hear these referred to as Sanwa or Sumitsu. The reality is Sanwa and Sumitsu are specific companies. They're very high quality buttons. So this is more of a uh, Sanwa or Sumitsu style button because it has a rounded top. There's gonna be four pins on this because this is an LED button. This actually will light up. There's an LED in here for two of the pins. One's power, one's ground. And then the other two pins are for the button itself. Show, I'm, I'm moving this out of the way so I can show you. This is what the lit up buttons look like. The blue ones I've got lit up, lit up here. The red ones I don't. Now I've still got the, the plastic covers on these to protect them, but that's kind of just what your control panel can look like. And hopefully in a future video, I do some fancy stuff with that. Now, when you buy a, a button, a Sanwa button, or a Sumitsu style button, again, this rounded top, this one right here actually clicks. This is a knockoff. It feels very cheap. It wiggles. But if you look at them, they look so close. But this one is an actual uh, button. I got it from Japan. I got it from a store called Mac in Akihabara. This was about a 3 or $4 button. But when you press it, there's no click. The switch is very subtle. It's very good. I prefer these for fighting games. They're very, very quick to activate. Very lightweight, very easy. Um, probably not so great for a game like a, a, a beat-em-up, like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but for Street Fighter, these are just... I love these. There's no, there's no switch, per se, that you can see on these. There's just the two terminals, and you wire those into your encoder. Okay, so that's buttons. Let's move over to joysticks. Again, you're going to have a Sanwa Sumitsu style. They're going to have the ball tops. They're likely having a five pin wire like this. It's a Japanese style joystick. Just like the buttons, it's very, very light. Doesn't take a lot of action to make this activate. You don't see any switches down here. You just see what's called the restrictor gate. The restrictor gate restricts the joystick on how far it has to go to activate. One of the mods you'll see is what's called an octagon restrictor gate. An octagon restrictor gate will give you a little bit more play in the corners, which is great for fighting games where you have to do a fireball where you're going to go forward, down, and then down forward at an angle. That octagon restrictor gate will give you a little bit more room there, give you a little bit better feel for fighting games. The other thing about this, very light, it's very precise. If I press down and let it let go, it goes right back to center. The spring on this is very lightweight, so it's very easy to move. Now, again, another mod you can do is you can replace the spring in here and make this a bit more stiff. This is called a ball top because of the round ball. You can unscrew these and change them out. This is called a bat top. This is a hat joystick. You can see the footprint of this joystick is quite a bit larger than the Japanese style. The arcade one-ups are interesting because they, uh, the Street Fighter one has the ball top joysticks and the, the ball top restrictor plates. So if you're going to swap it with a HAP, you're going to need a bit more room to mount this or you're going to have to get a different base here. The American style joysticks have the switches just like the buttons do. You can see if you place that right on top of there, it just matches right up. So it's just basically four switches. This is what's called a eight-way joystick, which means if I, I have up, down, left, right is four of the ways, and then I have the four diagonals. I can flip this around or uh, to adjust this on a Japanese joystick, I can do a four-way restrictor plate. The reason you do a four-way joystick is if you're playing an old game like Donkey Kong or Pac-Man, there's no those games had no concept of a diagonal. So if you're playing those on an emulator or on a jammer harness or whatever, you can't really hit a diagonal in Pac-Man and have it make sense. And so what happens is the game will normally not register the input. So what they do is you switch this out to only register up, down, left, right. And then if you hit up in the corner, it won't matter. It'll kind of restrict it to either being an up or a right. And that makes it a four-way joystick. And you get better playability on those games. Now, typically, if you want to have a... a control panel that plays both Pac-Man and Street Fighter or a, a shoot 'em up game or an eight-way game. You would have a four-way joystick on the control panel and an eight-way joystick. But there's also a joystick like this. This is an Ultimark joystick. You can see it's a bat top, American style. You've got the switches on the bottom. 
but this is both a four-way and an eight-way joystick. Now, a lot of these, what you'd have to do is open up the control panel and flip and sw uh, flip a switch here. But this one, you actually pull up on the joystick and rotate it. It's called a mag stick. And that will lock and flip the switch here. And then now this is a four-way joystick. It doesn't register in the upper right. It's only up, left, down, and right. I flip it over, and I get more of the eight-way joystick. Actually, I think I said those backwards, but you get the idea. It's called a mag stick. Now, all of these joysticks and all of these buttons, to get them to talk to a computer, you use what's called an encoder board. This is what an encoder board looks like. You might see the word zero delay. That's the type of encoder board. It's a brand. There's a couple different brands. There's also, I think there's one that starts with an X. Regardless of the brand or the style of the board, this is what a lot of them look like. These are called JST connectors, these little two pin connectors. That's not an arcade specific term. That's just the, the name for the type of connector. This plastic is called Molex. So it's a Molex JST connector. You'll see those terms. These pins here, if you're hooking up this style joystick where you've got the five pin connector, you can put it here for the joystick. For the American joysticks, you can go along the top here. Each one of these would be one of the four directions. The diagonals are interpreted as just two at a time. And then if you flip it over, let's see if I can get this red here. You'll see K1, K2, K3. This is the buttons. So the uh, player one, one button, I'm sorry, the player one button, the second button, the third button. If you're wiring up a Street Fighter layout like this, you would want to do one, two, three, four, five, six. That and MAME will map perfectly for Street Fighter and a lot of the fighting games. And it will also register button one here for as your default button for any one or one button game or one, two, and three here. They'll all be lined up. So that is the, uh, oh, the other side of this is a USB cable that um, you plug into here. And then the end, you have just a USB cord. You plug it in your computer. You use one of these per side of your machine. Each one supports up to 12 buttons. What's kind of cool about understanding this is if you wanted to use uh, build something that was an arcade button for like turning a light off, activating an Arduino or GPIO, um, a Raspberry Pi button, an on off button, a pinball flipper switch. There's a lot of things you can do with arcade buttons, uh, projects both gaming and non gaming related. Well, now you know how to hook them up and send them as a joystick input. And then all you'd have to do in your code is receive the joystick input and act on it. So. Very simple, very cool skill to know, very cool thing to know about. And hopefully now if you're building your control panel, you'll know the differences between all of these button types and which ones you'd want to invest into, find out the feel of, and then try them out. Hope that helps. Leave any comments and feedback below. I'm going to do some more um, arcade projects as I build out this Arcade 1UP machine that are hopefully things you haven't seen before. So if you want to see those, subscribe, and I'll get those videos to you soon. Thanks for watching. I'm Joe Farrow with Geek Toolkit.